Fakalofatu, Zeli Tiki Lei. I just want to have a very quick chat. It is the end of the year. Christmas is next week. New Year's is after that. So I wanted to have a very brief chat about this week that has gone on and some of the big ones. Now, I also want to make sure that I don't bore you too much, so I'll go as fast as I can. Have some speed as well on it. So today, of course, was the last day of the government's buyback scheme for firearms slash the confiscations. Now, we do know, of course, that the police have gone along and politely asked or very carefully asked gangs hey hey do you mind handing in your firearms and the gangs twice have very politely said no and we know that the government has been treating the legal the law-abiding kiwis illegal firearms owners like trash they have been uh, horrific in terms of their communication the uh, ever-changing shifting rules the prohibition list the data breach I'm not sure as to whether there is an attempt to increase the level of incompetence with such a process by this government. This government being, of course, Labour, Green, and New Zealand, New Zealand somewhere. Now, we have a very real issue going on with this government. This government, of course, is engaging in increasingly higher levels of authoritarianism. And it's, it's getting very worrying. So we do need to be very wary as to what this government keeps on pushing and pushing and pushing on. They utilised the actions of a foreign coward, the fear and the dread from that, and they shoved through laws, legislations that treated a great swathe of our core community as if they were criminals, as if somehow they were at fault. You are not at fault. The firearms community is one of the safest group of people that we have in New Zealand. We have a high level of gun ownership and one of the lowest rates of gun crime, illegal gun crime. And so we have an issue there that we need to conduct. New Conservative, of course, will repeal. We're going to get rid of these idiotic and frankly harmful laws and legislations. And hey, hey. Let's wait until we've had a proper investigation to find out whether even the vetting of this foreign coward was even at a minimum level. Not even uh, some problems with the vetting, but let's see if it was at a minimum type of level as well. Instead of running around like chickens with our heads cut off. We also have had, I have had a video sent to me, it's been doing the rounds. We have another area where a Māori council is pushing to have the police have an investigation upon them around institutional racism. Institutional racism, of course, is the idea that a system, there's laws or levers or systems, something's in place which says, hey, you're brown, no worries, we're going to treat you harshly for that. I don't see that. I'm willing to be corrected. But there is no law, there is no legislation or lever of democracy or within the policing justice system that says if you're Māori, we're going to treat you harsher. It doesn't exist. So I do want to say, look, don't worry, it's not there. Also along with that, you will find the accusation of what's called unconscious bias. Unconscious bias, of course, is the idea that, well, you know, you might not be racist on the face of it, but your mind might be racist and then that might sneak out somewhere. Now this is incredibly dangerous and invasive as well because of course your mind, your thoughts, if you want to think that cats are the supreme overlord of the death camp, that's absolutely fine, there's no worries, that is your thoughts, that's fine. But the idea that we can legislate or investigate and then coerce or educate out the biases that every human being has in their head is quite scary and it's also been debunked actually if ever a debate comes up I'm, I'll rip that to pieces as well I've already ripped it to pieces a couple of times more than happy to rip it to pieces again so this push to make institutional racism and therefore also with it unconscious bias to be flooding it now the reason why I have an issue with it of course is because that means that millions of dollars will get spent in that area rather than all of these other areas. If you really want to help our Māori in our prisons, 
We want to help our Māori get out of the problems. What you want to look at is the whānau, ainga, family, whānau, whatever you want to call it, the family. What was the structure of the family between in vitro pregnancy and the first thousand days, three years, and then to 16 years? If you want to know, no worries, I can also tell you at a frontline level. The amount of times where I've come across a young person who's escalating in behaviour, almost invariably, it's broken home, broken home, broken home, broken home, and almost all the time within those, no dad, no dad, no dad, no dad, no dad. It's not rocket science, it's really not. But we are paying out rocket science money for this. Once again. <laughs> Sorry about that, very good, all good. Okay, so... We also had the last day of Parliament in the last week. And last year, of course, we had Winston Peters of New Zealand Fur decide to admit in the last hour of the last day that he had signed the UN Migration Compact. Now, that was for me the straw. That was a straw for our media team as well. Because on, uh, on before that, we had been quite restrained. We did not call out New Zealand Fur for very much because we felt that, hey, they flip-flop on everything else, no problem, sovereignty is one aspect that they'll hold on to. That day, they absolutely disdained what they were about, they were contemptuous of the people who put them in there, and they signed it away. This document, of course, is highly damaging to our sovereignty. It even actually talks about sensitizing the media, re-educating, punishing the media if they are not pro-migration, pro-immigration, and it is overall a, a horrific document. In fact, I believe even in the smaller details, there's also a place where there's a role, and the role is nearly to a definition how you would describe a political officer from last century. It is that bad. It is that horrific. We'll continue to fight that as well. So ever since then, of course, we've, uh, we've uh, held New Zealand Fu to account and been happy to illustrate and illuminate how they are flip-floppy, fakery, uh, as well as having their Clinton Foundation. Sorry, the New Zealand First Foundation. Now, we also have one group who have had a horrific time this year as well. This government, their idea of year of delivery has been delivering brutality and bullying legislation, constant and haranguing of some of the deepest core elements of our community. Because that's what we're seeing. We're seeing this government seems to be against the core elements of New Zealand. The core. Law-abiding firearms owners. The firearms community. Christians. The family-based people. The equality-based people. And the other core issue, the group that I'll talk about now, farmers. Farming. Farmers have been treated like trash by this government. They have been treated not just like an ATM. They've been treated as another bullying punching bag. That's what this government has been doing. The expansion of regulations, the expansion of growth by the state into the various elements of farming, the pushing of changing paddocks and such into pine tree nurseries, is horrific and of course the icing the five kilogram icing on top of the cake of course was a zero carbon bill i struggle with this one because i'm aware that our current government is extremely leftist extremely woke very much increasingly dangerous and authoritarian i can see that but it makes an it makes no sense to hit your number one industry we have high density urban environments, sure, but we are a nation that has its strongest economic input from our farming industry, from our farming sector. Those families, those men and women who work the fields, who produce the world's best and greatest red meat, who are miles ahead in terms of skill and technological advancement than many other nations in their farming. Generations of farmers. And we have a government who treats them like rubbish. It's not fair. Not only is it not fair, it's abusive. 
it's quite clear from us. New Conservative will remove the ETS, we'll remove ourselves from Kyoto and Paris. We will repurpose those funds, those billions of dollars, into making pollution solutions at a domestic level. We've got great minds here. We've got Kiwi ingenuity. It's still there. The ability of our farmers to think their ways around issues and problems, we can repurpose it into that research and development. And we can then on-sell that to other nations. Instead of somehow having our own funds being extracted from our economy, billions of dollars being extracted from our economy, sent over to a foreign corporation for an outcome which we don't even know. In fact, the best estimates from what I understand is something like 0.004% of a degree in 100 years. And what, $5 trillion cost. It's nonsensical. It's abusive to our people. It is abusive to the very system that we live in. And this government's got to go. So next year we're going to come out. We're going to be guns blazing. We can't wait for it. It's going to be a good, fun year. And it's going to be fun because we believe that New Conservative will be the voice of conservatism back in Parliament. Let's fix this. Family and freedom. God bless you and God bless this nation.